Well, Ben, many congratulations. A maiden half century for you. And uh, more importantly, well, as importantly, sorry, batting out there for over three hours and uh, using time up into the game it has actually turned the game round to give Essex a, a, a chance of victory, which would be quite a phenomenal achievement given where we were earlier in the game. Yeah, I, think, I don't think it's just a chance. I think it's a massive chance in all truth. Like, what do we have from 60 for three at the end of the day, needing 108 more to win? Like, I think at Chelmsford, as we know, anything can happen, especially on day four. So I think we've got a massive chance. And, you know, it's just yeah, nice to be able to contribute with the bat and get that time out in the middle. Yeah, um, I mean, all right, batting at uh, batting at number nine anyway. But you, uh, like a lot of uh, lower order batsmen, you always uh, pride yourselves on your batting. And I guess in your in your ideal lineup, you'd be up at five or six, would you? I mean, I'd love to say yes, but I mean, no. Nah, nine, I feel very, I feel comfortable at. I feel good. Um, but at the end of it, like, I, I do back myself. I do back my ability. Um, throughout all, my whole sort of cricketing career, like from age groups to starting in men's cricket, I've always had belief I can hold the bat. Um, and yeah, paid dividends today, luckily enough for us and the team. So yeah, plenty of play, plenty to play for tomorrow still. When you when you first went out there to start that innings today, was the that uppermost thing in your mind to perhaps just keep going along with Paul Walter as long as possible. I mean, he was obviously the senior batsman at the time, just to support him. He was going well, wasn't he? And, um, you know, uh, as I say, just act as a foil to him, really. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think when I got into the middle, thankfully, and well, not, I don't know, thankfully at all, but I felt quite relaxed. Um, I felt I saw that it was a situation that actually quite suited me. Um, but yeah, as you say, Paul Lee vibed lovely today and unluckily he didn't go on to get a few more. But uh, yeah, I think if I could just be there for Paul Lee and sort of guide the innings along, get along to lunch, which is what we did, um, just take it from there and just tick off our partnerships, sort of take every 10 runs as they come and then see where they, so we'll see where we are in every sort of 15 minutes or so. So luckily, luckily for me, I've actually played quite a lot of Paul Lee in the past through, through twos cricket as well. So we sort of understand each other really nicely. So no, it's really, really nice to be able to contribute and sort of have a few partnerships with him. Have a few yeah. With him. Talk about the supporting role to him, but then when uh, when Paul Walter was out, um, you took on the senior role then with Sam Cook and yet another half century partnership. Uh, you were you were guiding him through the uh, through the overs, were you? Uh, I mean, I was getting a bit of jip from the Durham boys saying that oh, he's changed, a of, he's changed a pair of gloves, so he's the senior batsman now. But I wouldn't go too far to say that. I mean, I definitely didn't feel like the senior batsman. Sammy's played however many games, X how many poles as well. So there's me, new on the block, having Sammy Cook. But no, I didn't feel like I was the senior batsman. I just wanted to make sure that we could, as I, as I said before, be able to take every 10 runs as, as they come. And luckily enough, we have... We've got, what, 168 runs to sort of get through Durham. So, all to play for tomorrow. You were out there for three hours, 13 minutes, batting, uh, to be precise. Did time go quickly? Yeah. Yeah, it, it did sort of just come together as one. Um, I, I tried to make sure that I didn't actually look at the scoreboard too much because I find when you actually look at the scoreboard, especially when you look at your score it does tend to go a bit slower. So that first hour that I was out there for just went, just flew by. Um, but after lunch, especially when we lost poorly, I felt that, you know, if I kept looking at the scoreboard, it'd go a bit slow and it did. So I just made a conscious effort not to look at it too much. And by the time I looked at it next, I've got a few more runs under my belt and we've got a few runs as a partnership. So that was really good to see. Set the bar for yourself now, haven't you? Say that again, sorry. You've set the bar for your batting now, haven't you? Yeah, I know. I can't. I think that's the standard. Um, <laughs> I mean, I always, as I said before, I always back myself. So I think, yeah, going into future games with Essex, um, yeah, that's what I've got to look at. That's that's the bar. Um, and if I don't achieve that, if I don't get to that score, not be disappointed. But I think, um, yeah, I, sh I should try and make sure that those standards stay there as long as they can. Yeah, just one last thing um, at the start of this interview. You were 
very confident of the position we find ourselves in. Durham still need just over 100. Um, you, you feel that um, perhaps at the moment we've got a favourites chance, do you? Yeah, massively. I think we've always got to have belief, no matter what score you're trying to chase in the fourth innings at Chelmsford, you've always got to have belief. I mean, luckily enough, we've got Simon Harmer on our, on our side. So, you know, who else to better have tonight in your team than him? So I think going into tomorrow, we've got to be fully confident, really up in the field. And, you know, as I said, this one's for the taking. It'll be such a good win if we could get it. And I think if we were to win this, imagine, imagine how the game's going to go for the rest of the season. So I think this is, yeah, definitely there for the taking. 